Yes, friends, welcome back. Is the era of the live stream over? I ask myself, no, it's not. The stream must go on. You know, it's, there's a lot of terrible things going on in the world today, but just for a minute, we're going to focus on some beautiful things. Music. We love music. Thanks for tuning in. I have with me, as always, I get my points in the wrong direction because my streaming platform reverses things. Yeah, you did the wrong one, right? Yeah. Over here, I have none other than Mr. Adam Moore, very, very fine guitar player who lives in Norwich. I think, uh, yeah, welcome, Adam. How are you doing, man? I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? I'm good. I like your, your T-shirt. It's some kind of bear with Christmas. It's, yeah, it's Christmas bear. You're so definitely I'm... pushing the Christmas thing a little bit beyond... inadvertently arriving at the same event wearing it in May last year so kind of <laughs> that's how we roll amazing I mean the closest I've got to that is I forgot to change the clothes on my bitmoji you know what a bitmoji is no it's not that interesting <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you later um, so <laughs> folks <laughs> Adam so when did we when did we first get this track together this was a while ago right like a year ago maybe that I recorded uh, yeah, um, it was, I think, last January. I wrote a load of songs in previous kind of September, which I, everything now is based on, was it in a lockdown or in a bit between a lockdown? So mm. it was a bit between a lockdown, because I wasn't at home when I was writing it. And then, um, so that was kind of September, and then by January, it was kind of clear that, oh, there's all these people who could sit, who could play these things. And they're all sat at home doing nothing. So, so yeah, I reached out to you for that and various other people. And, uh, it happened. And then, actually, I mean, like, you recorded your part in January. And then it sort of sat for a bit while the other bits came in from other sources. Mm -hmm. Life happened and such like. And then, very recently, I got it finished. <laughs> So, folks, th this has been when he was talking about January. He means last January. So this is like, oh yes, I do. Yes, yeah. yeah. So this is like some kind of, um, you know, cured uh, Iberian ham that's been like cured for like <laughs> fifteen months or something. Oh yeah. This is like yeah. dank, and you know, yeah, um, it's yeah. Strange uh, stuff now. <laughs> so yeah, Adam, a little bit about how we met then. Um, you'd. Um, oh, I'm going off the screen. I've got to go to the left or right thing. There we are. I'm back in. There you um, go. I came across you. I some. I think some sort of Facebook algorithm rhythm like put you in onto my feed somehow, and I, I must have heard. Have Sorry to hear it. Time. <laughs> no, it's, it's a very very well done that algorithm. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that would have been about the time of Zero Sum World, I suppose. Oh, wow, you way back. That. Yeah. Um, and then I saw you play in Norwich. Must have been that summer. That'd be right. Yeah. Julian Seagal was playing sax. I remember that. Ah. So it must have been that was when poor Mike, poor Mike was unwell. He had some... He had blood clots in his lungs which is very weird and very very sort of covidy actually but this was way back yeah. then you know um is that like is that a, sac a consequence of over saxophoning i don't think so it's very unusual in in people his age as well but uh, he's very well now folks everything is fine and he's blowing his you know <laughs> amazing saxophone lines absolutely and all that but yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah, so then I remember you, and then you came for a lesson, but it was one of these situations where someone comes for a lesson and then you very quickly realize that not only are they very good, they've also listened very far and wide. And and you're kind of like, ah, oh, like within the first five minutes, it's like they're definitely, they're, they're not going to get anything out of this. 
They're going to want their mo- <laughs> they're going to want their money back. Um, no, no, so not. anyway, but but I'm glad we you know we ended up just working on on some music yeah. together, and um, yeah, very excited to play it to uh, play it to everyone. Super, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was a while ago, and then I've sort of followed everything you've done since, and uh, every now and again, again, I'll pull out one of your tunes and try and get my head around it. And kind of <laughs> having a go at what was the last one I was trying uh, uh, how do you pronounce it is it Lervin Lervin Glaslow there's no it's a sort of made up thing really it's kind of a mixture of Laurie Lowe and Kevin Glasgow ah I, I knew it yes. yeah because I, I, I was watching them play the other day and thought what about yeah it's not a spoonerism is it it's a it just what, squished yeah. squashed together yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah. My tune's very much like I'll be working on something and write it into a tune and then and and but then an album ends up being filled with things that you're practicing instead of things that yeah. you can play really well. That's a kind of lesson I've learned the hard way. So like more recently yeah. I'm like okay, how am I going to put my best foot forward instead of like an album of etudes or something, you know. Not that the etude yeah. isn't a important musical medium. Yeah. Totally. I mean, I've done that. I mean, this a couple of my, my songs that I've, I've re- re- recorded and released and go, oh, Jesus, the one time I played that right is on that recording. You know? <laughs> and then, oh, okay. Right, maybe I can go back and get that right or make it simpler or something. But, um, yeah. mm. well, with that with that tune of yours, I'm up to about 70% speed kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is really frenetic. It's really frenetic on the album. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, folks... You, you could be forgiven um, for thinking that Adam is like just a sort of, I don't know, uh, like a, a fan or something, but Adam is extremely prolific, actually. And, and there's a number of things, and we've got the album covers ready, as we like to mm. do. By we, I mean me, on the quarantine <laughs> zone. Oh, and by the way, everyone, I just want you to see how complicated my screen looks right now and how much effort goes into this. It looks like this. How complicated is that? Look at all these crazy things, okay? That's what we're dealing with. That's what I'm dealing with. Yeah. Um, by the way, how is everyone? Please please leave some comments. Let us know that you're listening so we know we're not just screaming into the void. And send any questions for Adam. Maybe they're going to come after after the music. But um, tell me a little bit. So this was the first time I heard you, Adam, was on this, um, yeah, this one. Yeah. Tell me about it. Uh, that I made, that's about 2015, four tracks. Uh, it's, that was my first shot at something that smells like proper jazz fusion. Um, and yeah, and actually that's the first time I got, I sort of got lots of other people to play on it. Um, Chad Wackerman's on there, do you know him? Of course I do, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Which track is he on for all the Zappa fans and Wackerman fans? He's on this one called the Theatre Garden, so the first one, Theatre Garden, and then Swung by Seraphim. You kind of can tell it's him, but yeah. he's always been my, my kind of like absolute favourite drummer. He's insane. I'm just asking. He's yeah, one of mine too. He's so gentle. Yeah. And another one of my favourites is Ryan Thrupp. How you doing, Ryan? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. There he is. Um, <laughs> Um, and especially yeah. any other drummers that leave comments on the quarantine zone, they immediately go to the top of my, my oh, ranking. Yeah. Um, so Chad Wackerman's on it. That's amazing, man. So yeah, um, go- and it was so a couple of the tracks on there is him, and it, that was the first time I'd got someone like truly spectacular to play, and like getting the files back was kind of hard. Yeah, and then I had the sort of job of mixing them. So. so when you load them in, when you like drag them into Logic or whatever, you, Pro Tools, it's like, oh my God, <laughs> really exciting. Yeah. Drop it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so he, then he was just really sweet. And um, and then he was over in England a few months later with Stephen Wilson. Hmm. Uh, touring whatever album that was. And I just, yeah, and, it was re- and I sort of went and hung out with him there. And he was a really sweet guy. And nice you know and yeah i could just he'd done one track at that point and um and i said and he said you know if you want me to do another one i'd love to so i said yeah okay i've got this other one it's got lots of time signatures in it and he sort of looked at me and went yeah that's kind of where i live so kind of 
Yeah, you do, but don't you? It um, won't be a problem, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting thinking yeah. about someone like him um, and someone like Stephen Wilson hiring someone like him because there are a lot of people yeah. who... I, I love uh, Stephen Wilson's music and I love Porcupine Tree as well. Um, mm. But I remember seeing... Stephen talking about Guthrie and how he has to kind of keep him on a leash a little bit. Yeah. And, and it was like, yeah, yeah. well, do you really need Guthrie then? Like, yeah. you know, it's, but then <laughs> it's a bit like Sting, you know, hiring a lot of, but I think Sting lets them cut loose. Whereas Stephen yeah. seems to keep people a little bit more on a leash. Like, yeah, they get their little moments, don't they? But, um, he could have, yeah, he, they, they didn't need to be that tech because it still comes out sounding like him and porcupine tree stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that on, again on that EP, he plays on a couple of the tunes, um, and lots of lots of friends are playing in it. And then I there's uh, and then there's, I got carried away at that point and got um, Matthias Eklund to play a solo on one of them. And um, I, have you? Did you go to? Free yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. for the for the benefit of the listeners, right? There's this crazy Swedish guitar player called Matthias I A Eklund, and he plays the guitar with like a sort of a vibrator, you know, sex toy vibrator, uh, uh, and loads of other stuff. Um, and he has this thing called he well, he had an album called Freak Guitar, right? Uh, if I remember rightly, and um, like yellow cover and stuff. And he has this freak guitar camp in Gothenburg? No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gothenburg, well, right? Sort of that way, yeah. Yeah, well, you fly to Gothenburg and then go and hang out with a load of guitar players and just nerd out for like a week or so. <laughs> and so that's so funny because yeah. I did that. I did that with him and you did too, Adam. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a lot in common. Another thing we have in, in common is a love and appreciation of Indian music, um, which leads me to this. Tell oh, me yeah. about this. Tell me about Amit. So, well, Amit Chowdhury is, he's quite a unique character. I play with him, um, our sort of busiest period was maybe uh, five or ten years ago, but um, he's he's actually an author, primarily. And um, if you listen to Radio 4 for more than a couple of days, you'll hear him. Wow, I must have heard him then. I, I put Radio 4 on all the time. Mm. Yeah, um, talking about all sorts of cultural things, um, and he, yeah, so he was um, actually based in Norwich for a bit at UEA, and he started putting out or working on music that was he the first he described it as not fusion, but in many respects it is. It's kind of a fusion of North Indian classical, which is. Um, the focus is more on Melody. The, the rags and the melodic content rather than all of that, that sort of South Indian heavy, you know, rhythmic stuff is in there. Mm. It's not quite so explicit. Uh, and he's a, a vocalist um, and extraordinarily good improviser. Um, and so we played um, this two albums worth of stuff and like a third kind of sitting in the can and all sorts of other bits and bobs. Um, and so, yeah, we played together all over sort of Britain and Europe and trips to New York. And I think my one of my sort of earliest London gigs, our first gigs was at the Vortex. And then awesome. one of my last gigs before lockdown was Queen Elizabeth Hall with him. Just a geo. Wow. So that was nice. Yeah. But they, yeah, they're, they're some really wonderful songs. Um, yeah. And... Yeah, just um, it was really interesting playing. Uh, so you had, you know, kind of like West. You had me and the bass player who are sort of fairly straight. You know, I think of myself as basically a rock player. So yeah. my beat is there in the middle. Yeah. And then you've got like a jazz piano player whose beat is over that way somewhere. And the tabla players, all the all the different tabla players we use, they're like in some sort of death race to get to the end. They're sort of so pushy, you know, right? Extraordinary, yeah, yeah, incredible. So when you, yeah, you got fight, deciding where the beat was at any point was well, that was really fun. Just trying to work out where, where mm, is it, mm, mm. and um, yeah, and uh, and keeping up. 
and uh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, man. I, I love that little gig. It's uh, hopefully we'll get to do some more with that. Come back to the vortex, man. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to watch you guys there yeah. or, or Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, um, yeah, it, it'll, we're as likely to be playing like a literary festival as a, <laughs> a festival or anything like yeah. that. So, yeah, yeah, we've done. Um, you do Hay, Hay Music Festival, for example. That's a good one. Well, we've done, we did Hay, yeah, the Hay on my festival quite a few times. Oh, wicked. Um, there's a footage of us on, it must have been Sky Arts from there. And, yeah. And then I've done, there's a little video floating about he and I did, just a duo on BBC Two at one point, which was Amazing. like the single. Was yeah. The single, which is a track called... Um, um, one fine day and my, it's, it's in it's in 10 and i just mm. had to you know keep this thing going in 10 and it was live I can, all i can remember and I, all I can remember it's up in glasgow we filmed it at the bbc there all i can remember from that from that recording is thinking don't fall off this damn stool because I, I was sort of perched on this stool wow i, I thought and you were going to say don't fall off the 10 beats <laughs> no but you, all right. you had don't, stool don't, issues don't not fall off and um yeah the 10 wasn't too bad, because that's kind of fairly ingrained. But you, I don't know if you find this with, um, if you're dealing with some of just like the five and ten counting with the Indians, mm. is they'll put uh, they'll put the like if it's in two like split into two and three. I'm far more inclined to go th three two. two yeah, two. yeah, they're the other way around, and it's horrible. Um, just going one two one. Da, 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 da. But yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. It's, yeah. That's great. You get to yeah, so that's, that's uh, do so much work. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. I, um, actually, there's, there's another couple of albums that I, I mastered. Uh, the f there's an album from Berlin from the first live album that I wasn't on, but I mixed it. That's just come out. And then also an album of I restored a load of music for him for, um, that was recorded. Get this. So this would have been about 1980 or 79. It was recorded off All India Radio. Wow. I, you know, just with a microphone in front of a, whatever kind of radio you would have had in at that point, onto eight track tape or something like that. Wow. And there's some noise on there. So yeah. um, I sort of spent some time. Like a kind that. of but it's really interesting. FBI agent, you know. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Man, so I, I love Indian music, but whenever the Darbar Festival comes to London, I'll, I'll sometimes go and watch three concerts a day. Obviously, it's been a couple of years, but um, yeah, morning <laughs> ragas, then an afternoon thing, and then an evening show. Yeah. And um, sometimes go to the Bhavan and the Nehru, you know, in London. Yeah. But I, I have not really played with um, many Indian musicians at all, except for one called John Mayer, who plays sitar, and he's the son of John Mayer, who was quite an important Indian figure in sort of Indian and jazz fusion. And okay. there's a funny story about, about royalties, I think, where once apparently someone was paid, you know, being called John Mayer, some royalties were assigned and the, the like amount of money was far larger than, than yeah. was ex expected. And they said, you know, I, I think there's some problem. I think you've got us mixed up. And then it was like, no, 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 these are definitely for you. And it was like, Okay, if you say so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wrote a song called Neon. That was definitely... Me. Yes, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah. yeah. But, man, so... other st Actually, you know what, man? It, it's time. Let's go to a video. Tell me about this tune. Okay. I just know it as Birds, but it's got a, okay. quite a, a nicely long-winded title, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, so this is one of the songs I was working, working on over long lockdown. The title is Un, uh, Unusual Birds Sing Strange Songs in Vivid Trees. And it is my remembering of a, of a line from, very weirdly, one of those sort of cheap, like Jeremy Clarkson books where he's talking about cars and stuff like that. I, I try to not go anywhere near them personally, but... <laughs> I'm not sure how I find it, but I read it, and um, he says that somewhere. Yeah. I'm having that, and um, and I think nice. the idea that it came from him that you know, I shouldn't be stealing lines from Jeremy Clark, so it's somehow inappropriate. But I did it. So. I like it. So here we go. Unusual birds sing. 
Strange Songs in Vivid Strange Trees. Strange Songs in Vivid Trees. Hope you like it, folks. Here we go.
Yeah, beautiful tune, man. Dude, I couldn't help but notice. Okay. My wife walks across the frame. Did you see that? In two of <laughs> yeah. them. She's yeah, going... Think, yeah, I've noticed that. <laughs> it's the thing with home recording, you know. Dogs barking, yeah. people screaming, wives walking, yeah. husbands walking. Yeah. But yeah, yeah beautiful, it's, man. It's the That's nature true. of these things. My house has two small children running around it most of the time. So yeah. It's very quiet now, man. Hey, that acoustic sounds amazing. Well, tell me about the acoustic and how you recorded it and stuff. It sounds so crisp and clear and nice. So that is uh, it's J200, Gibson. Okay. Uh, that it's that expensive. You'd have to say how much lovely. it is. They are bloody lovely. Is it expensive, though? It's my, it, my first, like serious guitar I when I was between school and like sixth form I mm. worked an entire summer for the Inland Revenue and saved every penny for that guitar oh my god okay yeah. so that's how so, much it's worth a summer basically yeah a summer of Inland Revenue filing is what that's worth yeah um, and I will never sell it to concerts and and it was recorded at, by my friend Dylan who's a, a university one of my students um, in it's through U87 and a pair of <sighs> a little pair, pair of something else I can't remember what K KM 184s or something if you're equipped with Neumanns maybe it was like the two pencil mic kind of things yeah that kind of thing it was um, I think it was Bayer's um, but yeah uh, so it's mainly U87s it, I've just yeah. a U8, one U87 on there sounds incredible yeah. and then it's just double tracked and uh, yeah. Okay, that's why it's that's kind of why it sounds so fat. The the double doubling yeah, yeah. for sure. U eighty seven. I love U eighty sevens, man. They're amazing. I'd love to get one, and also a pair of KM one eight fours for the you know yeah. for X Y pair kind of thing. I've got a sort of um, cheaper version of them, um, and yeah. they're really good. They're like literally a tenth of the price, but and and things I don't even know if I would be able to tell the difference. Um, maybe I'll never. Maybe I'll never know. I had a U87 up next to my, because the U87 doesn't belong to me, it belongs to the, co the college I work for. Yeah. So, because um, I'm not, <laughs> that's not happening. Um, up against like a, a Rode NT2 it was. And you, yeah, I mean, obviously you get up to, you know, 2002 and a half, you get to the law of diminished returns pretty quick, don't you? Mm. But um, they are different and they, they, they're almost self-mixing these things you right. don't have to do anything to them yeah that, that tends to be that's the difference engineers tend to talk about you know you just, they don't have to try to make this sound good in a track it just will and i think it's the case with that i doubt i did much to those guitars to make them see yeah it would just do it itself yeah. interesting mm. so they sort of they um maybe cut the less nice frequencies a tiny bit and yeah. make very present the nice frequencies, which is all you're going to do in sort of EQing anyway. Absolutely, yeah. Um, they, 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 they're not too brittle. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, don't really, I don't really know the science of what is going to make one good or one better. I mean, but Neither do I. U87 in, in front of anything. Sort we need of some Tonmeister, Tonmeister trained engineers to tell us this. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, if any Tonys, if any Tonys are watching, Actually, they were. It will be a big long paragraph, but please, please do go ahead. Um, <laughs> Matt, tell me about what you've been working on recently. We were talking about how gigs are coming back. You're getting pretty busy and yeah. stuff. I do you have yeah. time? Do you have time for stouts and porters and social media oh posts God. about delicious beers, rare beers? Yeah, I definitely do. There's always time for that. Um, um, so yeah, I do love a stout or a porter or a dark mild or a black IPA. Never trust a drink you can see through is my main motto. Um, <laughs> what about so, water? Except for water, surely. No. <laughs> no, don't trust it. Yeah. It's fair yeah, enough. Um, There's all kinds of organisms water. and hormones. No, yeah. you shouldn't trust water. I mean, it looks the same as vodka for a start, right? If you were yeah. judging it purely on visual. Anyway, Matt, sorry. Yeah, so. It'd be a worry. Yeah, so I, I mean, I don't, I don't, again, I don't understand, much like U87s, I don't understand the science of what makes them good. Um, 
but I am very keen to pick up as many. I, I, I sound like I'm a horrendous alcoholic, but you know, just like one nicely chosen obscure milk stout of a Friday night is absolutely wonderful. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's some pretty crazy stuff going out there now that is sort of testing me to the limit in terms of, you know, chocolate orange stouts of a, of a yeah, thing at the Yeah, I got a marshmallow yeah. dessert stout in the fridge, <laughs> which yeah. I'm going to have yeah. at some point. It's mad. Yeah, they're, ba- they're really, like, really runny tiramisu is what you've got in your fridge. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah, and then some of them are, like, kind of imperial stouts. So this, that's, that's pretty intense when you're up to, like, it's that, but it's 13% or something like that. So, wow, so. it's thick. It's so like it's viscous. Stuff out there. Yeah. 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 Wow. It, um, I'm getting married in the summer. Are you not married yet? I thought you were married, man. <laughs> no, no, just <laughs> no. We we live in sin. Um, no, but you just seem very together. You know, you seem very like yeah. kids producing lots of music. Yeah. Got nice teaching work and congrats anyway, man. <laughs> it's all together. But the reason I mentioned that is mm. uh, one of my oldest school friends who's coming is. Um, he's he doesn't own a micro brewery, brewery, but he might as well. And he's at that stage of making stuff that's like kind of basically he, what he chooses to make is what comes out. You know, kind of. <laughs> so, so I, I I'm getting my my a, a wedding beer, which is an oatmeal stout. Amazing. Uh, and I'm, I'm just trying to find it. I'm trying to find the description of it. Um, cause it's absolutely that's crazy. awesome man a bespoke uh, beer for your wedding yeah that's what you want um, where is it uh, do save oh, a yeah. can for me <laughs> man I will yeah uh, so his description is a rich and chewy oatmeal porter with a plethora of biscuit crystal and roasted grains uh, it has a luscious smooth silk chocolate flavour and a texture with a dark fruit and coffee hit there we go. So it's kind wow. of, and he can make that. You know, I can make. I could, if I was to make my own stuff, it would be. Oh, well, it's brown. I've managed to make a brown one. So <laughs> that's all I can manage. For. Yeah. Hey, will yeah. your wife drink so, it as well then? She'll have a go. Um, I'm sure. Um, it tends to be me that drinks them, and uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always referred to as the guy. Oh, he's having winter drinks again in the summer. But, uh, you know, kind of, that's how I like it. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, tell me, uh, I don't know how, but tell me about this. I don't know if there was a question, but now now there is. Here's the question. Ah, yeah. Um, So uh, this is another lock, uh, uh, getting it done in lockdown song. Mm. Um, I am a mad, passionate um, King Crimson fan. And, um, and, 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 did some studying with Robert Scrip at one point and things wow. like that. And um, uh, he's he's another guy for the for the uh, non-standard tuning. He's in fifths. Mm. And uh, yeah, so that and that song I wrote ages ago is a kind of I just wanted to write a, something that sounded like their their eighties kind of two guitars when it was him and Adrian Bellew mm. doing a lot of these kind of matted together parts and stuff like that and then and then it turned into kind of let's pastiche every version of King Crimson I can into one and that's that's that song and and I recorded it re-recorded it over lockdown with the same rhythm section you were playing on uh, Vivid Trees just there great rhythm section just, great rhythm section yeah. and you did you notice me jump I'm sure, well of course you notice because you listen to it loads of times but me <laughs> using that idea on the ride symbol from the drummer thank you drummer yeah. what was his name Joe Taylor. Joe uh, Taylor, thank Cambridge you for Place, yeah, thank you for the idea, Joe. You you helped me out in my second chorus when I was about to yeah. to plummet. You gave me something there, so yeah, it's it's a it's a great band. Yeah, Joe's amazing, and um, and Jimmy Clark, bass player. Uh, he's out in out on the sort of Norfolk Suffolk coast. Great, yeah, he's uh, great man. He he's Gloria Gaynor's bass player, so he gets to play. Um, I will survive <laughs> with Victoria again. Amazing. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so that rhythm section recorded this, uh, the influencer, this other song. And um, and it's sort of, you know, deliberately awkward and there's bits, you know, just 
where it could be four four, it's fifteen sixteen, and things like that. Just awesome kind of silliness. And um, and I I did all the tricks I could to think of like you have a so there's like retrograde versions of the melody, and then it's ping between the two guitars at half speed, and then does all, like every kind of trick I could think of in that kind of style. The tricks awesome. out. Um, but uh, now I'm going back and just finishing the video. The, um, the there's a solo in the middle that is is backwards, um, and was recorded years ago. And I'm I'm now essentially trying to learn to like play that the right way around. Um, it's really hard. So, yeah, uh, I, I might end up miming it or something. <laughs> I've tried a lot of things musically. Yeah. But I've not tried that. <laughs> yeah. That's so, cool. yeah, you record it. I record it, and it's it's done like the way Adrian Bello used to play a lot of his solos. They were more like noise solos. Yeah, sound and texture and. Yeah, kind of grab his whammy bar and throw it all around and stuff like that. So I did that forwards, and sort of tried to. You know, the arc of it is such that it, when you turn it round, it feels like that. You know, it, it kind of peaks at the end. Yeah. Um, so you play. You know. You, feel of it's backwards when you play it. and then yeah and then spin it round uh, but then then try to relearn it mm. backwards yeah so the other the other only other thing I could do is turn it back round and try and learn it the right way round which presumably is more doable but <laughs> kind of um, and then turn that round but I'm gonna have to try this man I'm gonna have to yeah, try yeah. this improvise a solo then write then it out then it. write it out backwards then play it in backwards and reverse that. That's quite a lot of steps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, oh man, I look forward to hearing it, man. Anyway. Yeah. That'd so, be mega. Yeah, the, the track is out on, you know, Spotify and, all, and Bandcamp and what have you. Yeah. Um, but the video will appear. That'll be the next thing to appear in the world. Just when I've, when I've done that little bit of footage, really. So, Wicked. Yeah. Hey, very quickly, let's let people know because can people buy that piece that we just heard um not yet it's uh, okay you can watch the video until the cows come home um, wicked so it's on youtube right it's wonderful yeah it's on youtube and my facebook page and i put it on uh, uh instagram uh so yeah yeah more guitar, it's around YouTube, but if if people around. do want to support monetarily yeah. because you know like everything costs money guitars microphones oh, yeah. streaming platforms internet connection blah 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 adam more guitar dot bandcamp dot com more m-o-o-r-e adam more guitar dot bandcamp dot com that's where you can support adam directly and indeed many many artists um so yeah thank you keith i know who you are keith with your fake name appreciate the uh <laughs> We, ap we appreciate the engagement on this here platform and particularly positive engagement. Man, it was really weird, Adam. Absolutely. Last, uh, last one I did, it was going out on Twitch as well. And there were loads of Russian um, weird comments that we couldn't un understand. And then it got a bit weird. Right. So I stopped it because there was some yeah. bad language. So it's nice that that's not happening today. Thank you for not attracting <laughs> crazy, uh, crazy people um, no. yet. <laughs> Fair enough. Yes, well, Russian, Russian people have a lot to be dealing with right now, seemingly. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, sad situation. Um, so, I have one other video to play, people, which I'm going to play to close out in a minute when we've finished yeah. talking. And it's a video I put together with none other than Danny Short, fine guitar player. Very much kind of behind the scenes, hired gun session chap, does lots of West End things. Um, and he's really, really funny. Uh, but he also has a sensitive side. And uh, yeah, so we're going to check out this song called Hannah. And I don't know who Hannah is. Uh, I, if someone is watching and you are Hannah, tell me who you are. But I know his wife is called Christina. So I know it's not for his wife. So hopefully he's not going to get in trouble. I'm sure he got clearance. I'm sure he got clearance. Um, so we're going to play that in a minute. But um, yeah. Adam, what did we say we were going to talk? We said we were going to talk about NFTs. Yes, just because. <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, they. Cut, I because you, you you 
added it to the sort of all the, the promo for this and I, with my university students in Norwich it's it's a current you know topic of discussion quite a lot yeah and I, I, I don't think I understand tell me that phrase that you used earlier which was awesome oh, remember it? it oh my god what was it um it just seems to be it seems, systems for simulating scarcity is the word which actually I, uh, one of my students was using today uh, as a way of essentially establishing scarcity value within a within a field where things are infinitely repeatable seems to be the attempt in a sort of bitcoin kind of bait what would be your kind of first what would be an ant law nft and Oh, you don't do this to me, man. Well, can, can we make the can we make the QZ an NFT? That would be cool. Yeah. Not non fungible yeah. token. I think it's all. I think it's all really stupid. You know what's non fungible? A real life, real time experience like we are having and the viewers are having now. You can't fun. You can't funge that. So everyone, everyone, funge off with your NFTs. I don't care. It's so dumb. Um, I'm sure you're all getting rich from trading them, though. Well, well done, you know. Aren't you clever? Um, wow. That's Maybe a bit... the next thing would have to be like your QZs will have to be buried at like level eight of some computer game somewhere before people can get to them. I think that's sort of. That'd be cool. Consistent. Hey, thank you for saying QZ as well, but um, but it's it's definitely QZ, even though that's not correct. QZ. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nice. It's from a it's from a video game <laughs> called The Last of Us, actually. Talking right, of uh, the right. online world gone mad. Um, yeah, no, no, but I appreciate that. I did get caught in a kind of ZZ dilemma at some point. Um, it must be difficult. Adam, tell me, tell me where your next gig is and when it is, and if people kind of want to catch you live. Uh, oh, my God. Is there I, any of that kind of thing coming up? The next, nothing particular like that. All, everything I've got is either a private stuff or there's, there's actually gigs coming up with, I do one of the Ibiza orchestras. Awesome. Which is great, which is lovely fun. Uh, if you happen to be in Marrakesh in July, you can probably see us. But, um, so that's going to be fun. Uh, the, but the, honestly, the next thing I want to do is once I've finished um, the few tracks that relate, you know, are part of the, the series that, I was, that you've played on, is actually take a band out live and play that, plus stuff from Song by Seraphim as well. Wait. That's my next plan. But there are no dates yet, but uh, I want that band to happen very soon. So that's yeah. Where I Amazing. So any booking agents Only. watching, contact Adam. Hook, the, hook it up. Please. Yeah. Um, and we were you were saying private stuff. Let's talk very briefly. We were talking about playing stuff over and over and over and over again. Oh, How, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you maintain... Now, this is something basically that's pretty much going to strike all musicians. Um, <laughs> Rosie Tay. Is that, is that your fiance, Adam? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm yeah. very suspicious of a woman uh, with with two kids in the picture. It looks too yeah. it's too obvious. Hello, Rosie. Thanks yeah. for tuning in. Uh, wicked. And also, I hope the kids are watching too on their iPads to boost the stats. Yeah. If they're not, yeah. get them. Turn Baby Shark off. Sorry, what were we saying? <laughs> um, yeah, playing things millions playing of times. Lot, lot of, the same thing a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. How do you? Uh, I, how, well, it, it, I find, I mean, the, the, the like the regular function band I do out in East Anglia, we're sort of very lucky in as much as we have lots of, the, the, Joe, the band leader, is amazing, and he's kind of cornered East Anglia for us, and it's a beautifully charted, you know, gig, mm. and we just swan round lots of, you know, nice venues contractually obliged to eat hog roast which is amazing um, Wicked, with apple sauce you know, that yeah oh yeah so that gig maybe we've played obviously it evolves but it's been basically 600 700 of that gig you know and um respect man respect it must be, something like that. And, um, and people go hey you know the good thing about being a musician is you get to do what you love. Yeah. Well, and then it's I like, mean, well, I don't always love this exact, <laughs> you know. Well, it's, it's a great gig. And lots of and, um, the, the regular band, the core of the band that's done it, has done it for, you know, whatever it is, seven or eight years, pandemic notwithstanding. But uh, a lot of the time, you just, you sort of, I just find myself going, 
God. You, again, it's, it's a non-fungible thing. You can't leap to having done it 700 times. You have to go through yeah. 57, 205, and all those things. And it's, <laughs> it's, that's the mindset for me. It's kind of, this, you, you cannot get to that level of tightness any other way. Hmm. Um, and, uh, and, you know, sometimes you do, I sometimes just do odd things. You try and avoid doing musical things to keep yourself entertained. Yes. By throwing in too much, because that's... Yep. Uh, Don't want to overcook it because you're bored. Yeah. Yeah, um, but, you know, or maybe I'll play it on a different guitar today or something like that. You know, that, maybe that'll do it, you know. I've started doing it on a telly, but I've never played a telly, so it just feels all a bit different, which is nice. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I mean, this and lo this loads of, loads of great players, because it's, it's sort of nicely connected to sort of London session people, and there's various sort of older session guys who've moved back out this way who are that band as well so nice you know dave the trumpet player is do you know dave land no Trump, got... trumpet player from start for starlight express for like forever wow stuff like that. He lives in the next village and stuff like yeah. that so he's in it all, most of the time and stuff like that and uh, nice so get... it's, but it is hard yeah I, I every now and again you'll be playing with oh I've, oh i think i zoned out there four or five songs damn um, oh, i'm back in the room now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's weird. yeah because yours is yours more yours is more sort of like i suppose written shows that don't change at all yeah, yeah i guess so He's in yeah the village to meet him. yeah tim rose good to have you back on the qz tim you know it has not been the same without you where the hell have you been but it's okay <laughs> we forgive you uh, do you know tim adam I know the name. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'll sort of meet him one day somewhere. I'm sure yeah, he'll. I'm sure you will, yeah, mate. Yeah. But yeah, it's nice to get some stories from these um, chaps from when, oh, yeah. uh, you know, back back in the day, maybe when, I'm as, as far as they tell it, there was a little bit more going on. M more work and more more things going on, more recording sessions and all yeah. this. Yeah, I think especially, uh, probably brass players in particular. I mm. mean, I, I, I actually I was on a, where was I going? I was on a drive to a gig with Dave and he was just talking me through stuff and I think he hit the sort of session scene. He he mentioned playing on the same session as Vic Flick at some point. Wow, the Bond. He's the Bond geezer, yeah. by the way. If anyone doesn't know, down yeah. and low now, no, yeah. Yeah. So and that was like three sessions a day at wherever it would have been. Oh my god, um, man. Yeah. That's amazing. As opposed to a, a year. Actually, at the moment, at the moment, I did one today, a remote one in, in my flat, but that's different, you know. You sort of want someone to say, come to Abbey Road, record here, you know, and like, yeah. but when you do it at home, it's just too, it's too easy, you know. I want, I want it to be more of an occasion. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah, it's, there's, there's plenty of those guys sort of intermingled and, 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 you know, friends I've worked with for years and it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, you, you mentioned, yeah, I think the main repetitive work that I've done has been, yeah, West End stuff, where it's much more fixed. That West End depping, I should say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And because it has to be, you know, as people depend, everything's very, very finely tuned and um, trying to Maybe. deliver something. But um, yeah. Hey, well, Adam, all that remains for me to say is thank you. Thank you very much. For from that. from me, me and the horseman. Oh, hello. Yeah. Yeah, and the owl. Okay. The other, yeah, I love that owl, yeah. man. And the bear. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Oh, the bear. No. The dark bear. Yeah, thanks, man. So this video is all over your YouTube channel. Uh, people will find it. It's called "Unusual Birds Sing Strange Songs in Vivid Trees." Trees. And if you search for Adam Moore guitar, more like Gary Moore obviously um you'll find it so just to close out then i'm going to play this video that i made with danny short a little song called hannah thank you so much adam man let's catch thank up soon much. and have a delicious yeah. uh, have a delicious beer and stuff I will do. thanks everyone for tuning in see you all soon <laughs>